At the age of 25, Winona Ryder is one of the top actresses in America today. She made her film debut a decade ago with Lucas. She made her mark with the dark comedy Heathers in 1989. She went on to star in an eclectic mix of films that include Edward Scissorhand, Age of Innocence, Reality Bites, and Little Women. She currently plays Abigail Williams in the screen adaptation of Arthur Miller's The Crucible. New York Times film critic Janet Maslin says her performance is played wickedly well with a scheming, selfish intensity that also rings true in any time. All of that at age 25. I'm very pleased to have her on this broadcast. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. <laughs> great to be here. <laughs> uh, you read The Crucible when you were 13 or 14. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my father gave it to me. I was just starting to get into acting. I did my first film, actually, when I was 12. Yeah. And uh, I misspoke, did I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he gave it to me because it was one of the few plays that had roles for young women. Yeah. And uh, I remember completely flipping out when I read it. It was just kind of a dream role. Because? Because... Um, well, I was really fascinated with the subject matter, that the idea that you could say someone did something to your spirit and everyone would believe you, yeah. or, you know, that, that idea. And also um, the, the, the relationship between her and, and John Proctor. Um, Played by Daniel Day-Lewis. Yes, I think is one of the most uh, complex, eerie, uh, sexual, but naive kind of relationships yeah. really ever. For, of course, it, when I was 12, I didn't really understand that part of it as well, but. Yeah. I want to talk about the filming of it, but tell the story to the audience who may not have read it, the story of, of Abigail Williams, who as a young teenager has this affair yeah. with John Proctor, who's married. Yeah. And then she is, in a sense, dumped. Yeah. You know, and she <laughs> vows to get revenge. Yes. Or she has to get revenge, because she can't let go. She can't let go. Well, I think, you know, she was working in their household as a servant girl, and she began this affair with him. And then suddenly, um, well, you know, she's, the wife catches on, mm -hmm. Elizabeth catches on, um, and not only is she dumped, but she is complete, she's fired, her, her, her name is blackened in the town. Her, um, she is completely has the worst reputation. People, you know, snicker at her when she walks by, and and John Proctor won't even acknowledge her existence anymore. So it's not only being dumped, but it's being. Of course, I'm I'm a little defensive, as you can tell about it, because I'm so sick of being called names. But um, you know, it, there's a, a line in the film where you know he says, "We never touched," and I say. Uh, I, but we did, and to me that was a very crucial part because to, to not even acknowledge that something happened between two people to a, a young girl is, I think, very sick and very um, cruel. So I think her reaction, her initial reaction was almost understandable, like the revenge, but then what happened with the town and the, oh, hys revenge, yeah, and, and the hysteria that the town itself created and the, and the um, you know, Paul Schofield's character, uh, the, you know, was he the governor? I can't yeah. remember. Judge, the judge. judge. Right. The judge comes in, the, you know, it's like, you know, she is the villain in a, in a sense, but it's more what the town does to, to, uh, to the situation. And how did you want to play her? Because you said somewhere you didn't want to play her as a bitch. Yeah. You wanted to capture the intensity, uh, yeah. but not... Well, to, to approach a role like that, I had to... I had to find sympathy in her, and I had to understand where she was coming from. And it, and like I said, it really wasn't that hard. In the, the, the beginning, the setup of the story, I really understood how she felt. Um, not because it's happened to me, but because um, it was just understandable that she would be so devastated and so angry and, by being ignored um, and, and, and cast out that way. But then... Um, it was hard. It was a hard line to draw because it, it, would be, it would have been really easy to play her as a bitch. Um, and I was very tempted some days to just do that because I was really exhausted and it was a really exhausting role and movie to make. Every scene is, is hysterical yeah. in and some And it's ways. easy to do that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, it would have been but, much easier for you to walk in there and just let rage go, go, yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And I 
had a lot of it, you know, yeah. built up, but but you, I had to give her some understanding. I had to kind of honor her in that way. And um, also, you know, working with Nicholas Heitner, I know you spoke to, it, you know, he and I talked about that a lot, and I think he had very separate relationship with me than he had with Daniel, so he was probably, you know, when he was talking to me, he was on Abigail's side, and when he was talking to Daniel, he was on John Proctor's side. So. Oh, that's what makes Nick Heidner yeah, a good director. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it was a hard, it was definitely the most complex uh, role I've ever had in terms of, you know. Does it mark some kind of new plateau for you, you think? Did it put you somewhere you wanted to be in terms of the kinds of things you want to do? and yeah. be seen as in terms of an evolution of a life and a career? But personally, it did. It was monumental in my life just because it was, um, it was such an expressive role. And I, I have played, I played a lot of different roles, but I, I'm, I've played a lot of girls that have been repressed or um, have been very vulnerable, have been very, uh, you know, the girl you, you root for. And... Um, the girl you want to protect or something and and this was a role that you know I I didn't want to play the sympathy card at all and uh, that was important for me and to to walk on a set every day for four months on an island off the coast uh, yeah, of Maine exactly um, to walk on a set and know that you can't you know bat your eyes and just be adorable and get everyone to like you and to, yeah it. you know you really I mean I I had to really leave that behind which was hard because I I did realize that that was a crutch for me you know if I was in a movie and I didn't things weren't really going very well or I wasn't crazy about uh, the, the part or something I would just rely on kind of being Winona, Winona you know yeah. and I and this was something that I knew I could not do that even for a moment if, if, if one moment in this film didn't work because of me like I felt like the whole film would crumble um, like or with any character it was like it had to be a perfect film because it was the crucible you know because you came into this with this yeah. huge admiration for arthur miller yeah i did and also just working with arthur miller was a like a new level you know i mean i've worked with great writers before but but that was it's like a historic we're talking about death of the salesman yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's historic and it's it's um i, I still can't get over but you had a chance happened. to spend time with him and talk to him yes. about life and literature and I acting. Did, yeah. And, yeah. I he did. likes the movie business. Yeah, he does. I mean, uh, I don't know if he likes the movie business. But he likes the idea of using, yeah. I mean, I think he's wanted to see this film for a while. I, yeah, definitely. You know, and never found the right director, never found the right combination yeah. of actors and director and, yeah. and, and ways to express it. Exactly. He, uh, I think he has kind of a, a strange love-hate relationship with, with the movies in a way, maybe. But he, with this particular, I, to, to see him on the set um, just nodding, like out, off the corner of your eye, you know, just sitting there with his arms crossed, kind of nodding as you're doing the scene, was like... I mean, I feel like I could, yeah. I could die now. Yeah, and looking hugely intelligent. Yeah, 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 I mean, I just... Casually intelligent. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, he's, his yeah. presence was just phenomenal. Here's a clip. I, I think this is the clip, uh, the second clip that we're going to show in which um, it, it happens early in the film, and this is where you're trying to convince John Proctor that yeah. he loves you. Yes, <laughs> sadly. Here it is. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Having, when you were making this film, uh, did it feel good? I mean, was there a sense that we're, it's working? Yes. I mean, I, I you know, there was a sense that we were making s something really special. I mean, in, in my opinion, a masterpiece. I, I've, I've never really said that about a film that I've been in before. But um, every day, every, every day, uh, maybe with the exception of two, two or three days out of the whole schedule, I mean, I felt like we had done it. We had 
reach places you hadn't gone before as an actor? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I was so, like I said, I mean, it was so, it, it was like going, I mean, I've always gone the nine yards. I've always tried to do as much as I can with a part, but this part was like a ball of fire. I mean, it was like, um, and you couldn't help but get completely, it wasn't something you could turn on and off. I mean, it was completely consuming, and it felt great. It felt miserable, but it felt great, you know? I mean, it was, it was a torturous process, but in the best possible way. Because she was in your head all the time. All the time. You didn't walk off the set Never. and forget about her. No, I couldn't. It was impossible. I, I have, on other films, I, I do that m most of the time, and, and, but on this, I couldn't afford to because to get wound up again um, when the next day it would have been too exhausting for me. So it was like this feeling of, uh, you know, you reach these places of like incredible pain or uh, agony or frustration, and, but it, it feels good. It's like that yeah. picking at a scab or something, or it's that good kind of pain that you know you're, you're doing something, yeah. you know you're doing something right because it hurts so good, I and guess. And nothing you've ever done compares to this. No, I mean, I ha on, on The Age of Innocence, um, it was such a different type of role, but I felt I'd had that feeling. Um, I was really happy with what I was doing. It was the first time I think I felt proud of myself, but it was a different type it's of role. It's quite amazing how much experience you've had yeah. in, in 12 years, 13 years. If you, your first film was at 12, you're now 25. Yeah. 13 years in the people you've worked with. Yeah, I've been really blessed. Mm. I've been really lucky. I sometimes can't can't believe it. I feel like sometimes, oh no, I've peaked, and I'm 25. <laughs> where where to now? now? Yeah. I want to look at one more scene, the courtroom scene in which Abigail is accusing Mary of conspiring. Roll tape. Do you think yourself so mighty the devil may not turn your wits? What say you? <laughs> Paul Schofield's pretty good, too. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think he's probably about... Well, between him and Daniel, yeah. I go back and forth. He's the best. No, he's the best. No, he's the best. <laughs> was it different working with Daniel in this film than it was in Age of Innocence because it's so different in terms of what you're doing? Yes, it was. It was, it was great, though. I, um, I was so comfortable with him because usually when you work with an actor, it takes so long to figure out how they work and what they like and don't like and and it's and they're so weird <laughs> actors <laughs> yeah and, it, and it's they say the same thing about you i know we all are and and so it takes like a month to get to even you're walking on eggshells and and with daniel i'd gone through all that so i knew exactly how he liked to work and um now what does that mean you know how he likes to work well i knew um i just knew how he like to have things when he worked. I knew he was very, uh, he's set in his ways, definitely. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a very, um, he said it was funny. He said, I have this face that people think I'm lost in profound thought, but really I'm just thinking about, you know, carpentry <laughs> what's, what's or something. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, he is very, very serious and, and he, he needs to concentrate. He's also a lot of fun, which I don't think people realize sometimes. I mean, he's a, He's hysterically funny, and he's, but he, I just was, I was really comfortable with what, um, how far I could go. When you were chosen, when you yeah. got the role, had he already been selected and signed on? Yes. Made it a lot easier for you, didn't it? Yeah, well, actually, I was, I had to wait about a couple of months before I found out if I got the part or not. I, I met Nick Heitner at the Academy Awards. Um, he just came off of Mad Englishman. Yeah. Madness of Kim Mad Madison, 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 Madison. And I, we were both up that year. I was up for Little Women, and he was, that movie was up. So we met, and, and I knew he was doing The Crucible, but I assumed that I was too old for it. Um, and I was, it was the Academy Awards, so I looked like Joan Collins, and I was <laughs> oh, no. just completely decked out. And so, and I had like a martini in one hand and a cigarette in the other. And I was like, oh, you're doing the crucible, great. And then as I started no talking... There's no way to imagine <laughs> you as Abigail liking me. No, and, and so I kind of thought, well, there's no way I have a shot at it. So we were just talking, and then 
in the conversation, you know, my wheels started turning. I, like, I could do this part. I know I could do it. I know I'm not too old. Um, and and I'm like, oh no, he's looking at me like this. He's never going to think of me. So then I we had lunch later that week, and I of course came looking Major like case. yeah. And um, and you did everything you could to look young and to come in. Yeah, but I. Yeah, and he had Daniel was signed on, but then he had to. He waited a few months before telling me I got the part. And during those two months, I remember thinking, you know, because I knew that the, the things I knew were that Arthur and Daniel had approval over who played Abigail. Mm -hmm. So of course I'm thinking, why aren't they telling me? So I'm thinking, Arthur Miller went to the video store. And the only movie they had available in the video <laughs> store was, was like something horrible. <laughs> and so he thinks I'm terrible and he doesn't yeah. want me. And Daniel, did I say something to him? You know, I, I was racking my brain, but then it all worked out and it was Did great. Daniel go to bat for you? Did you find out? Um, yeah, I mean, he, I think, kind of, I think it was more Nick deciding, um, because there was all these girls that he had to cast for like the, mm -hmm. the gang of girls if he wanted to go like 15 or 17 or 12. Because mm -hmm. in, in, in the real Salem witch trials, they were like 11, 12 years old. So um, no, Daniel said, oh, of course, of course, course they good. wanted mm -hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about growing up and how you got in there so early. Your parents were what we would say counterculture. Yeah. I mean, and they lived in San Francisco? In San Francisco. And then later in? In, in Mendocino County and on a commune. Which is north of San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. About. And you grew up in that household. Yeah. And what influence did that have? What influence did they have? And how was that shaping for you? They were just um, incredibly, they're cr incredibly creative people. My, they're very educated. And um, they're the type of people who kind of had the best education and could have done anything, any anything, and they chose to to write these crazy books that no one ever bought. And but what was so great was that they really did what they loved to do. So I grew up around people who, yeah. even though they weren't successful, right. quote unquote, like in I mean their books were great. They, they go to they, the they, bank every day, work. Nine yeah, to five. they they were always around. I mean my parents were, they worked out of the house. They were partners. They wrote books together. Um, very much, you know, in love with each other, and and we're a very close family, and um, it was great seeing, you know, even though we were very poor growing up, it was great seeing, like, yeah, well, we could have been rich and living in suburbia, and you know, or we could have done this, but we were doing this, and look how much. And you never regretted it. You never said during oh, that period. Of course, at the time, I hated it. Oh, you, you wanted to be like everybody else and live in a white in a house with yeah. a nice white picket fence. And I, I hated it. I hated. I hated living on the commune. Um, I loved. I mean, now it's like I I I appreciate it because we didn't have television, so we read a lot. I don't think I would have read as much, and we played theater games, and we. Um, put on plays and productions and all this stuff that probably if if we had been living in suburbia We yeah. wouldn't have done and it whetted your appetite to be an actress definitely and also being so um, my mom ran a movie house There was an old barn she put up a sheet and she had a projector and she had access to get old films on tape So I saw all the classics when I was really young, but my they tell me now they say you know You really did you really always wanted to be an actress because I don't remember and you went away to San Francisco yeah. Well, then to go to the conservatory moved, or something. Yeah. When you were we moved to Petaluma when I was twelve, and um, I got kicked out of school. Yeah. And you also uh, got beaten up, didn't you? Because yeah. Because they thought you were a boy. Yeah, I was. Um, I was gay bashed. Actually, um, I was about twelve, and it wasn't as dramatic as as, as it sounds. But um, it was a hick school. It was a kind of a, a hick town and um, I was the new kid and I got beaten up and then I got kicked out because I was considered a distraction it's very strange but so what happened though because of that is I would I was put on home study so I would get all my schoolwork on Monday for the week and I would do it all in one day and I had the you whole week free. yeah and so I was so restless and at that time I really wanted to be a writer because my parents were writers and so I'd, but then that wore, wore out, and then my parents said, well, why don't you go into the city three times a week, which was half hour away, and go to acting class? And I said, great, and I just 
oh. fell in love with it. Yeah, and then I got discovered sitting in Salmagundi's eating gazpacho. Like, and what happened? That, that year. I was, I was in downstairs from the theater. There's Salmagundi's. They have that in New York. I don't know. It's like a, it's like a diner. Yeah. And I was eating soup, and a casting director saw me in the window, and, and I got my first movie. So it was really because of these kids who beat me up and got me kicked out of school that I have a career, because I would never have gone to ACT, because I couldn't have, because I would have been. And then in three or four years, you did Beetlejuice. Yeah. You did what else? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I did um, Heathers, Heathers and, and Great Balls of Fire and um, Mermaids. But I, I did the movies during the summer because my parents kept me in school during the school year. So Timothy Leary was your godfather? Yes, he was. And what was the relationship with him? It's so different than what people think. It, it was very um, <laughs> conservative to what people think. We were very, very close. And he was my godfather, like how like a normal godfather. He, he was looking after you. Yeah, he, he took care of me. He never gave me drugs. He never, he never did drugs around me. He, did um, he ever tell you not to do drugs? No, he talked to me about it. He, he took the mystery out of drugs, certainly. I mean, they were like a big yawn for me because <laughs> everyone, everybody was doing everyone them. was doing them around me, so I, had, I never had any interest in them anyway. But he, he talked to me about but he's, he was a most gentle, funny, kind, wonderful man. And, and we, um, we were very close, but we, we would do things together, like he would take me to Dodger games and, and uh, he would tuck me in, read me stories, really, really took care of me. Um, it wasn't this big party scene that people tend to think. I mean, I was around that a little bit, maybe a couple times, but he was very protective of me. And so um, I could see it now. You and Timothy Leary at a Dodger game. Yeah. Oh, he was a huge Dodger fan, as is my my father, um, being from Brooklyn. You yeah. know. So yeah, we we had a very kind of normal uh, relationship. Um, I say normal for lack of a better word. I don't really know. It was a wonderful relationship. But people always think, oh, you were probably high all the time. It was no, nothing it like that. It wasn't a psychedelic experience for never. you. Never. I've never never done it. You were with him when he died, yeah. which was, what, six months ago? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The last 18, 20 hours of his life, you were there and held him yeah. when he... Yeah, it was really um, incredible. Um, and um, You never forget it, do you? No, I mean, it was... It, it really made me not afraid of death. I mean, he, he really gave that to me as a gift. I mean, he woke up that morning and he said, I'm going to die today, you know. So we were completely prepared. And, and he said, this is a great day. And he told me, um, and one of the last things he said to me was, you know, don't ever be afraid of this. This is fantastic, you know. And um, told me he loved me. And he was just smiling. I mean, when, when he died, he was smiling. And his eyes were open. I mean, and he wasn't on any, any drugs, no painkillers, no nothing, nothing, nothing at all. All day, he was completely um, on nothing. And uh, he was saying just the most profound things right and left. But when he died, like um, a few hours later, the, the mortuary yeah, corners the came. Brought it from the funeral home. And I was still holding him. I stayed with his body for a long time. And, and, um, and they couldn't get his smile down. Like, I don't know why they were, they couldn't close his eyes and they couldn't get his smile down. He was just kind of. He just looked so happy, and um, you know, it was a wonderful, it's probably the wrong word, but it was a wonderful experience in the sense that it, it just wasn't this like really scary hospital room. With, and he wasn't in agony. He wasn't in agony. He was so happy, and he was like, this He's is- with people he loved. And he wanted, he couldn't wait. I mean, a lot of people I think thought that was like, his way of dealing with death, like he's afraid, so he said, but he really couldn't wait. I mean, he considered it a journey and and he was very excited about it. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, it was something that I'll always carry with me. And You say it well, it, it was his <laughs> gift to you. Yeah, it, it really was. Yeah. After making those three films and getting all that attention, by the time you were 18, you were with Johnny Depp. Yeah. Well, 17. 17. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does he still have the tattoo, obviously? 
No, he's. What did it say? It uh, said I'll always love Winona. Or no, something? it's. <laughs> what? It said Winona forever. Winona, no, no, okay. Um, we're friends now, so yeah. it, there's. It's okay there's, to talk about. It's okay to talk about it, and and he's but a wonderful guy. You were with him for three. Four years. Four years. Yeah. yeah. And the intensity. By that time, you were Generation oh, X's gosh. special Whatever that couple. Means. Whatever that means. Whatever that means. You were the special couple. Yeah, I, I guess. I I mean, apparently we were according did, to the did magazines. Did it affect you? I mean, was it? Yeah, it was. It was rough on us because um, there was so much attention being paid to our personal life and your relationship. And I was so young. I mean, when I think of how young I was, eighteen. When, when yeah. the age that most people start college. Yeah, and I was. You know, I mean, already an accomplished actress. Yeah, You've and done I, things. Yeah, and, and I was I was uh, getting you know photographed everywhere I went, whether I wanted to or not. And, and we were very, I mean, there was a spell there where we were like, it was very. I mean, I look at Brad and Gwyneth now, yeah. and I think, oh God, <laughs> you know, it's it's. It was They're very going difficult. through what I went through. Is that what you say? No, well, I don't I don't compare their relationship to ours at all. I think you know. Um, they're getting married and stuff, but but all that attention is really hard when you're that young. I mean, I'm I was much younger than Gwyneth is now, but I I was I was very young. I did not know how to deal with it. I, I remember one one time just I would I would get very depressed about it, and um, about the relationship, about just the attention, the attention, and I would I felt like I I didn't have an identity for those a couple of years there because I was. All, I would just see myself in magazines, and I would think that's what I am. I guess I'm Winona. I'm this. I'm that. I'm precocious. I'm Johnny Depp's girlfriend. I, I didn't know who I was, yeah. and I remember one night I was driving. There are little Winona wannabes everywhere. Oh God! Well, I don't know about that. All right, actually. but go ahead. You're driving. I'm driving, and it was in the middle of the night. I was very depressed, and and I was very lonely. I was living in L.A. and and Johnny was away, and and things weren't going well, and, and I passed a magazine stand, and I was on the cover of I think, Rolling Stone, and it said, Winona Ryder, the luckiest girl in the world, and it had this picture of me, and, <laughs> and I was just going, I, I, I don't feel like the luckiest girl. I don't feel like the luckiest girl at all. <laughs> I feel I'm incredible. going home alone. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I didn't know who I was. I felt like, oh, and then I would feel very guilty if I felt bad. Like, I, I'm very lucky. I, should, I shouldn't feel... I shouldn't feel bad. I, I'm, not, I sh I'm not allowed to feel bad. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. It was just like this <laughs> yeah, mantra. Yeah, you're I, alone. I wouldn't. I w didn't let myself ever feel bad because I felt like I wasn't allowed to, and because uh, I didn't know who. I didn't have an identity. That's what happens to young actors. I worry so much today when I see actors starting so young and they I just know what they're in for and what's the identity today someone who's a professional who feels very good about her craft who sees the kind of evolution and sees a direction and well, on my good days <laughs> yeah I mean I <laughs> well, it's a bad day for you yeah. now well I you, mean you walk along <laughs> Sunset Boulevard and you see yeah. a magazine stand and there it says Winona has it all oh, and you gosh. say yeah Sometimes. No. I, I mean, it's important today. I mean, I love what I've embraced and what I've learned is that I love what I do, and it's okay to love what you do if it's acting. I used to think my mom, my parents were very political, and and uh, I grew up around politics a lot, and I was always like acting was kind of vain and maybe a little shallow, and yeah. movie star was a very fluffy term. Yes. And so for years, I was like, and your parents wrote books. Yeah, they wrote books, yeah, on top of everything else. And I was around writers all the time, so I always kind of felt like, ooh. And now I feel like I love acting, and acting can bring people joy just like reading a book can bring people joy. And and I am I love doing other things besides acting, and, and I, 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 I like my life, and I like what I do, and it's What's okay. there not to like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, there's a few things, but um, I, I just I feel like it's okay now to. Um, for years, I would I thought I have to be in pain to be a good actress. I have to suffer for my work, and then I worked with Meryl Streep when I was about 20, and she wasn't in pain. She was the greatest actress <laughs> alive. So I was like, wait a second. You mean all these years I've been in this much pain? Yeah. And. I didn't have to be, it's and not then I, that, that I hurt. Yeah, and so then I started doing. I started living my life and kind of 
not being in so much pain and I was just as good, if not better, of an actress, you know, just yeah. like knowing myself and being comfortable. And I, when, I, when that revelation came, I, my whole life changed, you know. I didn't try to destroy myself all the time to do a scene well. What's the worst thing you would do when you would try to destroy yourself? Oh, God, it was pr it's pretty lame, actually. <laughs> I was never that good at self-destruction. <laughs> Biting I, your fingernails is wrong. I remember one time I tried to break an Avion bottle, and it wouldn't break in a rage. <laughs> Um, I mean, that was just something like I was trying to vent, and that's like how far it went for me. But um, I uh, try destroy myself. Like I mean, I would, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep, and I would, I things would be, I'd make things extra dramatic in my life, and you know, just mm -hmm. teenage adolescent. Age of innocence, Marty Scorsese. Yes. Did he make a difference? Huge difference, huge turning point in my in life. In what way? I don't know. I felt like I kind of graduated when I did that movie. Um, it was, you know, with one of the greatest directors of all time. Um, it was one of my favorite. I was a huge Edith Wharton fanatic, and my parents actually wrote a book about her. So I, it was like a huge thing for my family, and a great part, and a part I, fu I felt like I. It was a huge challenge. It wasn't a, a little girl anymore. It wasn't a teenager anymore. It wasn't angst anymore. It was really complex, and um, it was probably probably one of the great roles I'll ever have. So, it, just the whole experience, and then actually making the movie, the process, working with Scorsese, working with um, Daniel Day Lewis and Michelle Pfeiffer was. I mean, I felt like I was. I don't know. I was really arriving. arriving. Yeah. Roll tape. Age of Innocence. Here it is. That is if the doctors will let me go. And I'm afraid they won't. Boy, you and Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. I love that movie so much. Yeah. Scorsese played movie trivia with you. Yes. He loves... You have a reputation because of your mother. Yeah. Showing all those movies of having developed a real knowledge of the characters and the plot lines of the classics, mm -hmm. and he comes along and, and has a reputation for making everybody that works with him, in a sense, wanting to imbue them with a history, a sense of the history of film. Yeah. I mean, one of the best shows I've ever done, or one of my favorites with him, is when Fellini died. Oh, I saw he that show. He came in and talked yeah. about Fellini, oh. and to hear Scorsese talk about Fellini is to hear someone who just, you know, understands all there is to know yeah, he's about cinema. A, a master, I mean, there's no word to, there's no adjectives anymore to yeah. describe him and, and uh, his, his talent. I mean, he just, it's mind boggling. Do you stay in touch with these people that you have these? Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. Um, one of my dear, dearest friends is Jay Cox who wrote. Sure, Time Magazine. Yeah. Writer. and. Uh, we developed a really great relationship on that, and, and we've stayed really close. And, and Scorsese and I, I mean, whenever I can see him and talk to him, I do. He's just someone that I cherish. I will cherish for, forever. Is Jay Cox still a time? I know he wrote the screenplay for The Age no, of Innocence. No, he's not he a time anymore. He's, he's Probably left writing. five years ago. Yeah, yeah. he's writing screenplays, and uh, he's, he's just brilliant. I mean, I, I love everything he writes. I want to be a... a Boy, so I can be in everything he writes. He, write, he, he, he wrote a great version of Joan of Arc that I really wanted to do at one point, but it didn't work out. Um, he's you, Little Women, hmm. something you very much wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Do you was... ever have to fight for these, or did they just come to you? Well, I mean, have I... you somehow, because of your age and because you, of, of the people that are of your age, you stand out, and because of the experience you've had, because you've been doing it so long? I mean, they come to you more than you having, as so many people did. I mean, Kristen Scott Thomas said if she had not gotten the role of Catherine, she probably would have gone off and, and it would have had a terrible impact on her life. She wanted that role so badly and yeah. fought for it. I, I, so I saw that show. <laughs> I see you know what I mean? all the time. <laughs> yes, I, I But do. it seems to have just not been as difficult for you. Yeah. That's true. It is true. I mean, um, the work itself has been 
as difficult as any work. But, but getting, for instance, with Little Women, apparently it was a very difficult movie to get made, and apparently my involvement helped. But I didn't know it that. It wasn't bankable until you came along, they say. They say, I didn't know. All I know is that I read this wonderful script. <laughs> I call Carol, who's my, my yeah. manager, and I say, I love this. I want to do this. And she says, great. And then we're making the movie. So all that's kept from me. Like, you know, Are you sitting here saying that you're rather naive about the power that you have? I mean, the sense of, of who you have emerged to become as an actress? I think... I mean, when I'm in the mood to be, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, 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 when I want to feel... When you're in the mood feel, to be powerful or to want to use yeah, influence. Yeah, I do. And uh, I certainly, what's happening a lot now, I see, is that people are starting to, you know, I was always the kid yeah. on all my movies. I was always yeah. the kid. And like, oh, Winona, that's so cute. She's got this idea. Or, oh, you know. And and I worked with Denise DeNovi, who's a producer, did... Heathers and Little Women and Edward Scissorhands, and she was the first person who started actually um, making me feel like my opinions and my ideas really mattered. And then um, later, as I worked with directors, um, and and I got a little bit older, and now I, I feel like my input really does matter. And I never, I have no interest in directing. I think it would no. be the worst thing. I could ever do. I couldn't imagine directing if my life depended on it. I mean, to me, it's like to have to think, to have to answer that many questions, and to have to think. You don't that want many the control. You don't want to no. make sure it's your picture. You don't want to make no. sure that your vision. No, you don't I want mean, to I see want the all best those of what things. you are end yes, up in the film course, and but not I don't on the wanna, floor. I don't. I don't want to think about all those yeah. things. I don't want to think about location scouts, and and I want yeah. someone else to do. It. I I love acting. Yeah. Have you missed anything? Because all you've been working so hard since you were twelve or thirteen or fourteen. And I mean, did you have any innocence that was never there for you because you've been out and about for a long time? No, because I stayed home. I lived with my parents until I was eighteen. I mean, I was seeing Johnny Depp when I was living with my parents, you know, in, in Petaluma. You know, I, I had, I mean, yeah, I missed out on, I didn't go to my prom, I didn't... I don't I, mean that, I mean just the whole sense of having a high school life and all of that. You, you don't care, you don't think that was missing very much. I think much. that would have... You'd rather been, have had Johnny Depp. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but but what, what's interesting about nowadays is, and being taken a little more seriously or using my power, so to speak, is, is just that it's just the response that people, the same people that I've, I may have had a meeting with five years ago, seeing the difference in their responses How now. How is it? It's just very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. It's, it gives me a lot of, there, but... it gives me a lot of glee to see them completely changing their tune. You know, I'm the you same person. You mean they're person. leaning in to listen more now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. I mean, of course, I mean, sometimes. Would you, have but... you reached the point where you can carry a movie, you think? You tell me. I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, you know the business. I don't. I'm, I've always been paired with someone. Exactly. So I don't know. But I is mean, that something you'd like to do? I don't even think about it in that way. It's like if it's a great role, then. But you are at the point where you're optioning stuff yes. that you want to do. Yes. You'll get somebody to direct it and somebody to produce it, but yes. you. I'll actually will be involved in the producing, production. but yeah. I, I won't do any of the dirty work. How about the casting? Like, I'm producing it so I can do stuff yeah. like casting and the fun stuff, yeah. but I'll. <laughs> Uh, look around you and think about actors and actresses, especially actresses, that we know about. Mm. Whose career do you like, do you admire? Who's done what you'd like to do? Gosh, um, are alive? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't, either way. I don't know, um, I'm like... I mean, do you have a hero? A heroine? I have so many. I mean, everyone from Jenna Rollins to Barbara Stanwyck to uh, Ida Lupino. Jenna Rollins was here the other night, too, and she was quite... Amazing. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, to uh, Meryl Streep, yeah. um, to Judy Davis. I, I, you know, I. There's just so many. But I, I don't want to be. It's like I used to. I used to want to be ha like be like Meryl Streep. I used yeah. to study those. But now it's like I. I want to be myself. You know. I want to. One of the things they say about you. All these articles that I've read, and, and all these magazines, and Vanity Fair, and Harper's Bazaar, and Vogue, and all those places that write about you. They say. And tell me if this is true. You are not obsessed about your career. You're enjoying it, but not obsessed by it. 
Hmm. You think that's wrong? No, I mean, I'm very. It's very important. The work to me. is important. I think Being if, good if is my important, career wasn't going so well, I'd be, be obsessed. I'd be obsessed, definitely. <laughs> um, I get obsessed, like when I'm not working. I do go through, like I'm never going to. Something's wrong. I'm never going to work again. I mean, I took a year off after the Crucible, and it was like the worst year. I mean, wow. I mean, I was, I was trying. I was con determined to live a normal life, and I was up in San Francisco, and I was going to the store every day and making dinner every night you know I was really but it was you know I was I was anxious I love working I love I love working so much so what do you do when you're not working though during that year did you read books did you go to movies did you go out every yeah. night did you I am um, I I read a lot I go to a lot of movies I see every I see everything good and bad you know I, um, yeah, I mean, there's a story I, of you watching movies on all night on cable and yeah and calling your friends the next day and saying you got to see this and you got to yeah. look at watch this very, great performance and very special relationship with Bob Dorian from AMC I've never met him but I feel <laughs> American like American movie yeah what channel we, we yeah. I like when he talks is that it American movie channel yeah classics yeah okay, American movie classics yeah. right when he talks, like I, I answer him, you know, like I go, oh, really, Bob? No, because I'm gone. Don't tell Are me. Are you up late all night? Yeah, I'm. A, um, late I night person. It, work, it runs my family. Yeah. Insomnia. And sleep late in the morning. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, it does not go well with my work. You're next going to do um, Aliens Resurrected. Resurrection. Resurrection. The resurrection. Yeah. You now, why do you want to do that? Because. I saw one strong woman had a big influence on you. Yes. Is that it? Yes. I when I was 10 years old, I saw Alien and what? I it changed my life. I'd never seen a woman heroine like that before and she and I love science fiction. Nobody knows that about me. My my brother runs a comic book store in San Francisco a comic and book store. Yeah, yeah. It's actually two now. Just got another <laughs> one. And He's soon uh, to be a Magnet. Like I've always loved, like Ray Bradbury and and um, you Isaac know, Asimov and all those yeah, things. and 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 this was a great script. I loved the series. I loved the character Ripley. Of course, I'm not Ripley. I really wanted to work with Sigourney Weaver. Is Sigourney in this one? I assume she yeah, is. She is, of course. I'd never do it. With no, <laughs> no, I would yeah. never do it without her. And this great director. It was like all these great things came together at once and. And it's great. It's a lot of fun. Have you started filming already? Yeah, I've been and there's a story that you got. You've been pumping iron for. Very exaggerated. <laughs> you haven't, because you don't look like no, you're I, I, um, muscle bound there. No, I, I, I can't really. It's not in my. Muscles and you don't go well together. No, they don't. I, I trained for months before the shooting, but it was so not six hours a day. It was. It was a Thirty couple, minutes was yeah, about it. Yeah. Like, you know, the least well, where did the story away. develop that it was six months? Oh, six I started it, I'm sure. <laughs> now, how do I know everything you've been telling me is true? <laughs> no, it was like one of those things where people, oh, God, it's like six hours a day. You know, there was exaggerated numbers, and then suddenly it yeah. was in the papers, and I didn't really, it sounded so good, you know. I sounded so disciplined. I just didn't deny it. <laughs> Have you missed parts that you wanted? One part. One part I didn't get that I wanted what was, was uh, the Hudsucker proxy. I uh, went to Jennifer Paul Jason. Did you want to? Uh, Jennifer Jason Lee got the part. Yeah. Um, it was the Coen brothers who I worship, and and I I was up for it. I read a bunch of times and yeah. got close, I think, but I was I didn't get the part. That was the one, like huge devastation. Big day, bet downer, wasn't it? Yeah. I also read for um, Fearless. Um, for the part that Rosie Perez played, and I screen tested for that, and I didn't get that, and I, want, I really wanted to. When you to don't do that. get a part, what's it like for you that you want? I get over it. I mean, like the Coen brothers, it took me a long time to get over because I felt like I really would have been great in that part, and I really wanted to work with them, and I kind of felt like it was going to be one of my only chances because it was. I, they don't make movies that often and yeah. stuff, but, um, you know. It's like the, one of those things you think about it and you, you cringe and go, but you get over it. You know, I mean, it's not like Kristen Scott Thomas, you know. I, I haven't had that kind of experience Did you like yet. English Patient? Yes, I did, very much. Great roles for women. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know. And you interviewed Juliet the other yeah. night. She's so beautiful. It's a good film. But, but Frances 
is so great in Fargo, too. I mean, what a role for an actor. She's going to get the Oscar. You think she will? Yeah, I yeah. think she will. Well, God, I mean, I, I love Brenda Buck and I love Kristen Scott. I love all the women this year. It's like, but there's something about I love that movie, and she's just brilliant in it. My mom's from Minnesota, so she talks like that. Yeah, yeah, she talks yeah. like that. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. I think she will. What do you think? I think she will, too. Yeah. My guess is that's why, one of the ways that I think English Patient will probably win the Oscar, and I, I, kinda, I hope it does. But I think that Fargo, they'll pay a lot of tribute to Fargo, especially by that way. I mean, yeah. if that's the way they work. I have no idea how they work. I, but that's me neither. You know, I'm just surprised by those people that didn't make the DGA nomination list for directors. I mean, there were a couple of people that didn't get nominated, I think. I, th I may be wrong about this, but, I mean, there were a couple of, I don't want to say this because I'm not sure, but it was someone like Milos didn't get Milos nominated didn't know. for the DGA. Mm -mm. I mean, and that just neither seems, did Nick. And Nick Heitner didn't either. Which I, I mean, thought he would. You know, she should have. He's a terrific director to work with. And he the comes best. Because he comes from the stage to film. He is just, I mean, I know you've spoken to him, but he... He was an actor once. He claims he wasn't a very good actor, yeah. but he was an actor, so he knows how to wind you up. And he starts like when he want, he starts to perform with you, and so yeah. before you know it, and then the cameras are rolling, and you're, it's he's amazing. He's he's definitely um, him and Scorsese are my favorites of all time. All time. Yes. Yeah. I would work with if someone said you could only work with Nick Heitner for the rest of your life, I'd be, You'd be happy. happy. Yeah. Or alternating occasionally with. Yeah, yeah. Scorsese. That'd be nice too. And the cone yeah. Is there a man in your life now? Um, no. No? No. No. It's my brother's. My brother lives with me. <laughs> no, I'm just um, spending time with myself. But you're happy. I'm and very you're comfortable happy. comfortable with where you are. I just, I work so much. I'm, I'm really, really close with my ex boyfriend, Dave Perner. Right. I mean, we're like soulmates, best friends. But Is that yeah. But it's and it's good. It's it's just not. Um, you can do that. You can go back and have a good friendship, even yeah. when you were once lovers. And yeah, I've only had two real boyfriends in my life, and I'm friends with with both of them. So I'm very lucky. I mean, it took a while, but I'm lucky. It took a while for you. It took a while for them. Or it just took a while to just, work out a I relationship. Think it took a while. Certainly with Johnny, I think first love takes a while to get over, but then. You know, it's great to be friends with people you were with. You, you think Johnny is misunderstood at all? Or it's pretty much what you see is what you get? Probably. I mean, I, he's such a nice guy. And I, I mean, certainly some of the things I hear about him I know aren't true. You know, some of the rumors and all the bad boy stuff. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's not a bad boy. He's a good boy. He doesn't tear up rooms and do stuff like that. Oh, I'm sure he does, but, you know, <laughs> I, he, it's not, yeah. I don't know. It's, he doesn't, he never causes any real damage, you know. Yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a really wonderful Have guy. you escaped drugs and all of that in terms of? Yeah, I've, I, growing up the way I grew up, it's I a miracle had if you did. no interest. Because they were everywhere. They were everywhere. And me, I have two brothers and a sister, and we just, none of us ever. And never? Ever. We, 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 it's like so everywhere. boring. Well, it was like on the commune. And it wasn't for both, for, it was not verboten for you. No, I mean, yeah. there was never hard drugs around. Yeah. I could never take. There was grass and. Yeah. yeah. I, first of all, I could never put a needle anywhere in me. And I could yeah. never do anything that made me hyper. So I've never been attracted to. How about the sexuality? Like I mean, were you more free no. sexually because. No, because I saw free love and I. I, you, you know, square people produce round babies and round people produce square babies or whatever that is. <laughs> My parents were round, I was a square. <laughs> I mean, you know, not really, but I, 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 my rebellion was to be um, very, uh, you know, more conservative than they were, I think. I don't like saying that. I mean, I'm liberal, but I'm conservative with myself. I, I'm, I can't look at me. I'm like, I'm tiny. One drink and I'm on the floor. Five, three. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, such a lightweight. I couldn't do drugs. I, if I did drugs, I would, I would be dead probably. I imagine. As we go out, we'll see a clip from Little Women. Thank you very much. It's Thank great you. to have you here. Thank you very much Pleasure. for having me. Come back. I will. <laughs> I will. Winona Ryder.